Joining us now is General David Petraeus, retired U.S. Army General and former director of the CIA. General, always an honor to have you on, sir. Thanks, Marky. We're following this uh, latest development with Gershkovich this morning. But first, let, you know, let's go back to Friday. Navalny was the most vocal and courageous Kremlin critic. Is Navalny's death a win for Vladimir Putin? I'm not sure I'd characterize it as a win. I think it's more of a further illustration of how the Russian Federation has become a Stalinist dictatorship, uh, again, which brooks no opposition uh, from journalists uh, or political opponents uh, that could stand against the, again, the dictator, or perhaps even a mafia state, uh, with uh, the, the Don, in this case, being Vladimir Putin. Um, the history here is very, very ominous. Uh, it, it's gotten worse over the years. Uh, you remember Boris Nemtsov uh, back in 2015, very prominent uh, political opponent. Um, obviously, the case of Navalny, we've also seen this with defectors. In fact, over the last 48 or 72 hours, a Russian, former Russian pilot who defected uh, to Ukraine and then went into Europe uh, was gunned down uh, in Spain. Uh, so all of this, I think if, if anyone had any illusions left uh, that this is any kind of functioning democracy and that the upcoming elections have any real value or meaning, noting that, of course, the figure who was emerging as a possible opposition candidate in the elections has also just been deemed uh, he's ineligible right. uh, to run for office. Yeah, the, their elections don't work like ours do back here at home. He's almost guaranteed an, another six years. Can we talk about Navalny's wife, Yulia? I mean, I have been so struck by the fact she hasn't skipped a beat, right? I mean, she learned about his death at that Munich security conference the same time the rest of the world did. She's now promising supporters that she will continue her husband's fight against the Kremlin. Uh, General, my immediate thought has been, does she now wear the target on her back? And, and what does the future of the opposition party look like moving forward? Well, I think it's very, very difficult. Uh, she is indeed very courageous. I was at the Munich Security Conference. There was a gasp in the room uh, as the news spread about the, the murder of Navalny. Uh, and then to see her on stage uh, right after Vice President Harris, as she explained that she asked herself what Alexei would have done, and, and he would have taken the stage, uh, after which then she would go to her children. Um, but how she's able to carry this out, given the challenges for the opposition movement, keep in mind that individuals aren't even allowed to put a rose on a monument uh, to actually, I think, I think it was those killed during Stalinist days in Moscow. They have actually been arrested. Um, so the challenges here have gotten ever uh, more, uh, almost insurmountable uh, inside Russia. It'll be very interesting to see if she chooses to go back to her country in the very courageous manner uh, that her husband did, knowing certainly that he would be arrested on arrival. He was. And of course, that was after he survived uh, a poisoning effort uh, that was narrowly averted by uh, good German medical services uh, in his hour of need. Um, he truly was an extraordinarily effective and courageous individual. Uh, who again returned despite knowing what the likely prospect was. Yeah, so he's really been a thorn in the side of the Kremlin. It's a fairly chilling impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. A thorn in the side of the Kremlin. Hundreds of people arrested in the wake of his death just for mourning, you know, his death and his loss. Uh, Western leaders, including President Biden, have condemned Putin in the wake of Navalny's death. What course of action in response should the White House be taking right now, sir? Well, I think it should be more than just the White House. The White House has already announced that it's going to pursue additional sanctions. So has the EU. But this is a moment for Congress to end its indecision on this issue and to recognize the very urgent need of Ukraine on the battlefield uh, for the $60 billion that's in that package, which also includes, of course, assistance for Israel that's needed and some for the Indo-Pacific region as well. I think that would send the most significant message uh, to Ukraine, to Russia, and even to our European partners, uh, especially given the questions about uh, the U.S. and its leadership uh, at the Munich Security Conference, where, ironically, the Europeans have definitely stepped up. The EU just passed a 60 or a 50 billion euro additional package, having already provided two for every one dollar that the U.S. has provided in aggregate.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.